My guest today is Wildlife Division Chief Casey Anderson. We're going to talk about winter wildlife and habitat. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Casey, how has the winter been so far for our wildlife? So, so far we're coming in looking, you know, a little, probably less than average for snowfall, but we've had some pretty severe cold snaps, you know, that can affect wildlife out on the landscape. Okay, let's talk deer. I mean, what, what kind of habitat do deer need? So, you know, in the wintertime you're looking at, obviously, a thermal cover, um, which is something that breaks the wind for them. Um, something that maybe helps them retain body heat, you know, as they're out on the landscape. And then also proximity to food. Um, you know, if winter cover is too far from a food source, there's a lot of exposure that happens tra just in the traveling process to get to those um, different sources that they need. Okay, and we didn't have snow until mid to late December, so that's probably good for deer? Yeah, the later the snow holds off, you know, the, be the better it is because it, it makes those traveling um, from winter cover to food a lot easier. Um, and it also, you know, just helps them find food, be able to dig down to where food might be or, or things like that, unless they've found a, a fairly good source of browse that's up above the snow level. So deer on the landscape, um, seem to be doing fairly well. We haven't had that many um, um, issues with deer on the landscape so far. And so as winter goes along and things get, you know, drawn out, uh, they're using up more of their reserves and things. And so time will tell as we move into the latter, latter part of winter. Okay. Let's move into our non-native species, the ringneck pheasant. How do they do in the winter, especially a winter like this? So, you know, they're quite a bit smaller, obviously, critter than deer. Um, and so cold spells are, are really taxing on them. They don't, they're, you know, they're not built like a sharp-tailed grouse with feathers all the way down their legs and things like that. And so, you know, they really do rely on thermal cover and then, of course, food sources of, of energy, you know, so that they can maintain their body condition throughout cold snaps and things like that. You mentioned sharp-tailed grouse. They are native to North Dakota. Yeah, and it's, it's always funny, sharp-tailed grouse, you'll see them on the landscape and it, it's like the cold isn't affecting them. They're out in the open, um, moving around and feeding. You know, obviously the longer it goes on, you know, the harder it is for them to maintain body condition, but they, they do fare a lot better than like your pheasants do just because they're native to this area and they've, you know, de developed the system that can, that can deal with it. Okay, a uh, fair amount of snow on the landscape statewide. How do like turkeys and pronghorn and moose and the bigger animals do it? So turkeys are gonna, and turkeys are one of those critters that they really rely on probably a grain type of food source sometime during the winter. Um, and then of course, you know, your, your wooded areas are where they're gonna be hanging out between wooded areas and some place that has some sort of grain food source, whether it's a field or, or open, you know, uh, landscape where the wind is maybe blowing it open. And then uh, when you get into like pronghorn, they'll, they'll migrate at some level, okay. um, trying to get to, you know, food sources and things like that. You know, they're, they're pretty wide open prairie type animals. So, you know, they, they deal with winters more by movement. Um, and so, you know, in a winter like this, they're probably, you know, maybe moving even sometimes out of the state. Okay. Um, you know, right down our major pronghorn population is down along the South Dakota Montana border in that southwest corner of the state. So we'll see them, you know, moving across borders even if they have to if winter gets too severe. Well, moose handle winters pretty well. They're long-legged, bigger body. They can travel a little more easily. Um, and and they're, they're built for cold country. Um, they can handle the cold quite a bit better. Casey, everybody knows we're in a drought. We went into the winter in a major drought. How does that affect wildlife habitat? So it affects, it probably affects the winter cover that's out there. Um, whether it was cattails, you know, in a slough or things like that, that maybe didn't grow as robustly as they normally would over the period of the summer. Um, and then even just grass, that taller grass vegetation and things like that probably isn't as tall 
as it normally would have been and so you don't get any windbreak relief from any of that stuff especially when it fills with snow pretty fast um, the other thing that you know all of these animals coming into this winter were probably short on reserves as far as fat reserves and energy reserves and so the worse the winter is probably the quicker it's going to catch up to them just because they don't have the ability to you know maintain some body condition loss because they came in with a short supply to begin with. We have a, more snow on the landscape now than we did all last year. What can people do to help? So one of the biggest things is these animals that are that are taking refuge in winter cover um, move into food sources you know they're trying to limit the amount of time that they're out in the open. That's how they survive and maintain their body conditions. And so you know we like to view wildlife, we like to you know, some people even like to shed hunt and those types of things. And, you know, we would encourage people to view wildlife from a distance. You know, you, you get into where you're going to walk into a shelter belt or something and, and maybe shed hunt and you're pushing all those deer out into the open. Well, every time they run out into the open, for one, they're running probably, expending energy. And for two, you're putting them out in the exposure of the, the coldest or the worst you know, conditions that are out there because they've moved out of thermal cover. And so people to just keep in mind to view wildlife from a distance, especially when winters get bad like this and really cold. Uh, and then uh, that'll just allow those animals to conserve energy. And you know, that gets into everything. You know, we've had a lot of winter activities in North Dakota because we have to live with winter for four or five months sometimes. And so people find things to do and things like snowmobiling, um, you know, they like to ride their ATVs and things in places, you know, just be cognizant of where those wildlife might be. Maybe stay away from some of that winter cover so you're not inadvertently pushing animals in and out of that winter cover when they don't have to be. And then, you know, the other thing is, is that, you know, as people, people get out on a snowmobile or something, you know, it is illegal to harass wildlife. Um, and so people just want to be cognizant of what they're doing out there. and if they, you know, pay attention to what's going on, where they're at, and what might be winter cover, and if they see deer tracks or things going into an area, it might be time to turn around because they might be laying in there trying to conserve energy. Just keep your distance. Yep. Okay, uh, we do need the moisture. We have some snow on the ground, but we need moisture. Um, how about these spring blizzards? What do they do for wildlife? I mean, you can have a nice winter, and then you get that 20 inches of snow in, in March. What, what's that do for wildlife? So, you know, even in a nice winter, animals are still using up their reserves because the, the vegetation and things isn't as nutritious as it would be during summer, spring, summer, and fall. And so they're starting to use reserves up as winter goes on, whether it's you know nice or, or rough. And so the rougher the winter, the faster those reserves go away. So when you get into those spring blizzards, you know they're usually wet, um, they're, so they're usually pretty tough. And anytime it, an animal out on the landscape gets a little wet, of course, the thermal um, conditions of them deteriorates a lot faster. And so spring blizzards can be the toughest coming out. They're taxed, they're low on reserves, and it can just kind of be the, the last, you know, almost nail in the coffin type of scenario um, if they get pretty bad. A lot of great information, Casey. Thank you.